individualism involved in it as well, like the individual. So in regards to like each person being quite different, being like, what's the pathway? I think you should go down versus you should go down. Yeah. Like it's not just, it's not just subject. It's not just like quantitative and objective, right? It's like, it's quite subjective. I'd say like, I would tell you my goals and you're like, all right, how to hit those goals are different as to someone else. Man, no doubt. But like, I seem to be finding and working with so many blokes at the moment that are somewhat around our age that just seem to be in this rut of He's suffering. Late 30s. He's late 30s. Let me just... Yeah, I'm glad I got included in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But it's like... Now you're married now. It's the same. It doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah, we were talking about age on the way here. Yeah. I was like... Well, we were talking about his kids being uh, being like a year apart and how him and his brother are two years apart. And like when you're a kid that's obviously like a big ratio difference but mm. once you're like a certain age as an adult it like is kind it of go, it kind of goes out the window doesn't it like you're either going to get along with the person or you're not yeah <laughs> it's not an age related matter 100 percent. but uh, yeah i was saying it's like sure to the specific stuff to the individual but it's like if you eat like shit you sleep like shit you don't move you don't get any sunlight you sit in a fucking office all day until you're doing that we don't need to worry about the one percent that's specific Correct. to you yeah, yeah. as the individual yeah. 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 Anyway, it's rolling, right? It's, it is. It's always that's rolling. That's how, yeah. how I always roll. Yeah. But yes. It's, it's, uh, it's all right. Cool. Yeah, Lock, sure. <laughs> welcome to the Living Rewired podcast, man. It's uh, it's good to have you in. I think yeah. this is the second time we've tried now, isn't it? Yeah, there was that construction that I'm looking at. That was. I know. That was, what, like two weeks ago? There was the jackhammers going? Mate, it's been going for six, seven weeks now. Yeah. But they assured me that they're they're nearly done digging okay. up the roads. But nonetheless, it's, it's good to have you in, man. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, it's uh, good to be here, yeah. So for those of you who don't know Lachlan, he uh, is a jiu-jitsu black belt, very well known in Australia. His his greatest achievement is giving me my black belt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so he's my coach. He also has a bronze medal ADCCs. I believe bronze medal at Nogi Worlds as well. Yeah. He's done a bunch of things all around Australia. No one cares about Nogi Worlds. No one cares, yeah. apart from the people that only have Nogi Worlds medals. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's safe to say that you're definitely one of the biggest names in jiu-jitsu coming out of Australia, though, for sure. Yeah. I yeah, mean, he, you're globally known. He's, I would say yeah, he's the most famous Australian. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. yeah, we'll say that. We'll say that. Um, he's also recently had an interesting study done. So I'm not sure if you even know about this, but he did. So he got a donation of 100000 Was it US dollars? I was just yeah, watching yeah, this. Yeah, I yeah. did a little yeah. bit of... Just a bit of background and, prep yeah, and, yeah, yeah. this and, morning and saw that. And he surprised me with the figures because I was like, I didn't think that uh, many people would test, as many people would test negative. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I that, mean, that was the, uh, I guess, to, to qualify, you had yeah, to be yeah. a clean athlete. Yes. And was it water testing or you started testing? Or then it was a wow, well, yeah. So, okay, we'll start from the start. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I was given... A hundred thousand dollars. I was allowed. To, he said, basically, the the person who gave it to me basically said, like, uh, they want to re remain anonymous. They just said, you know, it's, it's to give it towards helping upcoming jujitsu athletes in Australia, um, and you know, however you think it's best spent. Um, yeah. So <laughs> was this just a random? Yeah, it's very random. Yeah. So then I was like, all right, and then um, I thought about it, and I was like, okay, I'll give out. Um, you know, I, I'll, I thought who sh who's first. I thought like, well, who, you know, who this, if it's to go to developing or like up and coming athletes or, yeah, like, I suppose established. like yeah, like how do you who do you give it to? And I thought, you know, because like obviously like you know if we want to make jiu jitsu in Australia, you know, if we want to create the next world champions, for example, like mm. um, you you probably would look at you know the juniors and how do we how do we bring up the, you know, young kids and, yeah, yeah, you know, how do we that's, inspire? That's, yeah. Um, oh, no, not necessarily inspire, but, um, like, you know, you could, you could give funding to them, but to be honest, I just, I feel like there's so many juniors and it's hard to know. Like, I feel like there's a very good chance you would put money there and it doesn't actually. So are you just holding on to a little bit of that cash right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've given, well, some of it out, not all of it out yet, but, um, but yeah, I feel like with, with the juniors, there's like, such a large pool that you'd almost need you'd need like a a bigger grant than that to really like create a proper program to and i suppose kids the up. process of it just to be acting as sponsorship to sort of fund them to yeah. be able to invest their time fully into yeah jiu-jitsu yeah. yeah yeah 
Yeah. And you also don't know where that money would be going if you gave it to the actual kids. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, just is like it just going to the parents? Or yeah, like, is it you know, exactly. Yeah. Does it yeah. go towards anything, really? Yeah. So I decided, I thought about it. I was like, well, you know, we've got some people who are already doing well, um, you know, and they're, you know, a lot of, for a lot of people in Australia, especially like pretty much anyone that's like competing at and meddling at ADCC or Worlds or one of these like reasonably well, obviously very difficult international level competition. Mm -hmm. Like they're pretty much all don't make a lot of money mm. and would benefit, like, you know, they'd benefit from some funds just to help like with their training. You know, maybe they have to work a little bit less or. Yeah. Uh, they've or sacrificed, so, they've sacrificed a lot. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I knew that going to those people it would, it would go into, um, you know, they'd, they'd, they'd put it into jujitsu, you know, they're not, at least as, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, basically, just like decided that anyone who meddled at worlds or um, worlds or like a major a major international IBJJF event or at ADCC trials, mm -hmm. um, or like quite recently, um, and we're Australian, correct? Yeah, Australian. And, I, and then I was like, well, I want people who are like, you know, I, I want it to help Jiu Jitsu in Australia as well, like, mm -hmm. and you know, do make it Jiu Jitsu in Australia better or a better environment for Jiu-Jitsu in Australia. So I thought, um, you know, they have to do the majority of their training here in Australia. Like if they're overseas the whole time, maybe mm -hmm. that is, maybe they do get better going overseas, but it's not really helping the local but it's not really scene. Really, so you, you want know? it to be where someone's based. Yeah. Based or like from Australia. majority of their training. Yeah. Add to the yeah. scene of the local yeah, it's scene. Like, yeah. Because they're, they're obviously good. They're high level. They're competing well internationally, but they're doing a lot of training in Australia and helping other people come up as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I also thought, well, you know, I want them to be clean as well. Mm. Um, That's a big topic right now. Yeah, it's a huge <laughs> yeah, topic. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, there are organisations in the jiu jitsu world that don't do any testing. Yeah. Right. So, if objectively, right, if I said, Jack, you have X amount of years to catch up to the rest, and there's no drug testing, like, and you had this goal, it would be like, well, maybe I should take drugs mm. and and get to this level. Some organizations do test i don't know how regularly but i mean i've i've placed at worlds i've i've never been drug tested yeah ever. Lucky have you? you you've been drug <laughs> tested <laughs> you've been <laughs> drug tested <laughs> heaps haven't you no, no or was I've that a joke on the sorry was no, that no, a joke on the instagram no no i did the drug testing of other people oh I've never okay, been okay. Tested. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah i offered i offered it when gordon accused me i said if you want oh to did test, he accuse you yeah but I, I but he the, thinks everyone's on it so. i think the plates yeah i mean is that just because he is it plates for dates is that that like the fucking guy Derek, he yeah, he thought I was he, on he it. He accused him as well. <laughs> well. Not really. He Gordon, Gordon found like a photo of me. I think I was like cutting weight for lightweight, so it would have been like seventy three, probably like eight kilos lighter than I am now. I was going to say I don't want to insult you. I know you're a yeah. fit dude, but yeah. I don't look at you and go gear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I, I, I hope you can take that as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, when you so roll with him photo. though like you might be like this guy's fucking pretty strong yeah for yeah. sure that's different yeah, yeah. but that's like technique that's a technique feels it's like a, that it's, it's a technique <laughs> um, yeah so he like Gordon like had a picture of me cutting weight like after training just in a t-shirt so I look mm -hmm. skinny you know and mm -hmm. then like another photo of me mid-match or after a match like Pumped up, pumped yeah, up, pumped like, up. Like, you know, like this. And he's like, look at the difference. Like, mm. he's on steroids. And then, like, I think he made up. He's like, oh, he put on, he, he, put, on, he put on, like, 25 pounds in, you know, he said, he said I put on 25 pounds. So he just like, pulled these numbers two, out. Yeah, he's like, in two years, he put on 25 pounds without doing any weights. And so that Derek, the um, more plates, more dates guy, was like, oh, well, yeah, if, if, you did, that if happened. you did that, then if that if that was the fact, like a, then, yeah, a thirty-five yeah. year old can't put on that weight in that time. But I, I'm the same weight. I've, I, I haven't mean, changed my weight division since I was like twenty. Really, I mean, I've cut, I've cut weight down. Like, but your like actual level of weight is. But the same. My, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's that some pretty low quality research there, though, because from someone who's spent a long time in the fitness industry, I can make a before and after in uh, yeah, three yeah. hours. I mean, look, I think the whole like months, the whole like, I, I think like obviously, if someone's you can you can definitely like. I mean, I think you you can't. I don't think you can just look at someone's physique and go, they're definitely. On you think it. you can? I don't. I don't think. Uh, I mean, unless they're like insane. If they're insanely like, you, you got a bit. 
You look at Liver yeah. King and you don't think he's, he's a... He's no, he was definitely... <laughs> yeah. The only people that were upset about that situation were the ones that didn't think he was on gear. They were naive enough to think it. Um, but, yeah, I think... Um, not always. I, I, think, I think, like, if someone's gone through... I mean, like, if you look at Gordon, like, he was a skinny, was skinny guy. Kid. Yeah. Mm. And he was, like, like, he competed my weight, like, 77. I think, I think he, he would cut, have cut, he to, cut, that. He cut yeah. to that. But, like, a skinny I think he'd probably guy, be about your then, size, though. And then what he is now. But, like, he would have been, like, your kind of weight. I, don't, I reckon he would have been, like, 82, 83 kilos. But taller. But and tall. Very, very, quite yeah. skinny. Yeah. I, I think if you can... But I think you can tell by looking at someone if you can kind of see where they've come from a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To that point. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I mean, since I've known you, you've kind of looked the same the whole time. Yeah. I don't think you've... Really My changed. head didn't grow twice as big. That's what he said. Your head? Yeah. Oh, I, don't think, I don't think I don't mean, think <laughs> Your I mean, facial structure grays. Starting to change With all the growth hormone <laughs> Yeah 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 There's more greys But that's about it <laughs> More greys All that oxidative stress From the high testosterone <laughs> <laughs> Is that um, a thing? Definitely a thing Yeah really um, Yeah but anyway I mean so Going back to the uh, The fun So yeah I, I just wanted like You know I, I feel like And it's cool I think that like It's cool seeing guys like Kate, Like the guy I lost to At ADCC Kate I'm pretty sure he's clean Yeah um, mm. At least that's that's from everything I've heard. He is and like he won ADCC. That's the Rotolo by the way. Yeah, Rotolo. Yeah. And they're, like, they're pretty and young and they're quite outspoken about anti gear. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like of course you never know really, but like I think it's good to have role models like that and to show people like you can actually do well without it. And I, I think it's like like I know of a few people in Australia, even some like young impressionable people who have like gone Dabbled. and started, mm -hmm. you know. Taking steroids, and I just think, like, what's that going to do to them? For you know, like, what, why? Yeah. So I was, I'm, I'm hoping. I, I suppose, like, part of it was like part of doing the actual testing of people was to sort of, because everyone has this thing like, oh, everyone's on it, so it's not cheating. And I wanted to go. Well, I, 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 mean, I know for sure yeah. everyone's not on it. Yeah. So let's let's test people, and you know, because now you can't use that. You shouldn't be able to use that excuse. No. You know, like. Now it's like, well, not everyone's on it, so mm. am I cheating if I if I go on it? Yeah, you really yeah. proved me wrong with that one. I was I was very surprised that like I thought there'd be some names for sure that I was like that guy's a pretty big fucking jack dude. Yeah, I'm like clean athlete. So Rotolo oh. might not be cheating with gear, but did he kick you in the face? <laughs> 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 no, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I honestly didn't even notice it at the time. Um, I mean, he was just doing what he had to do to get the umber. I think he was. I was pushing his leg off, and he was. Putting, putting it, back. it back quickly, so yeah, yeah. I and was I'm fine with it. I, I mean, they they both move very like Gumby like, so yeah, like I don't I don't think the intention was to yeah. kick you in the face, even if like no, he was trying I think to finish uh, the yeah, 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 like if if your face was in the way of that trajectory, like, yeah, so be it. But <laughs> yeah, mm. um, anyway, we wanted to I guess today talk about like learning and I guess different coaching perspectives. All of us, we mm -hmm. all. Well, I guess we're all different people, even though we sometimes have similar contrasting opinions. Um, you obviously have your submeta website. It's very mm -hmm. like a, I'd say it's quite like, I'd say it's like university standard of jujitsu. And that's, that, and that's like a compliment. Yeah. Um, thank you. Obviously you have like yeah, your, like your modules. more work than my PhD. <laughs> really? Man, yeah, I, yeah, I, for sure, as yeah. I mentioned, I had a quick sort of background yeah. scan before you came on. There's a lot of content on there. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah it's, How long have you been doing Sub metaphor. Like, remember lockdown? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but is, that, is, is, that, when it, is yeah. that when it started, so before, though? Before the lockdown, yeah. we started, like, filming and stuff, yeah. Uh, even still, like, that's still an impressive amount of content yeah. for that time period, man. There's heaps. Yeah, no, it's been... You yeah, know, I, time, yeah, and I know yeah. what kind of goes into that. Like, I've got yeah. my own sort of app platform with yeah. all the exercise tutorials and video stuff, and, mate, there is... There's a lot to talk about. Hours for yeah. sure. of work in that. And, so. um... And yeah, I guess with your sub meta thing, uh, anyone can subscribe to it. But for like absolute members, they're given like specific modules based on what they think they should work on. Yeah, right? so I suppose that yeah, that so like for well, yeah. Um, so it kind of works with two functions there, in house yeah, so the, and and out and for yes. anyone. Yeah, so yeah. for every like, there's it's like a subscription for anyone. Like anyone can subscribe mm -hmm. and they get everything. Um, mm -hmm. For my students, I in some ways I think it's better. Uh, to do it like this oh, in some ways yes in some ways no but like it's like you just have one topic to work on it just it lets me kind of the the paradox of choice I think is a problem in jiu-jitsu where like there's so much. many things right. and mm -hmm. a lot of people are like oh you know 
I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And they like changing things up all the time. So just like, and I don't expect someone to just learn this one thing, like one topic mm-hmm. over the time, but like every six months we do like an assessment and I'll just, I'll, everyone will have like a, a topic I've expected them to work on mm-hmm. and they can show me, you know, that they've been working on it. So it just lets me kind of, it, there's a lot of students. So it's like when your club gets bigger, it starts getting pretty hard to like individually be like watching what yeah, everyone's doing. You should doing. be working on and this. You yeah, should be working on that. A, yeah. So um, it just it makes it a bit more easier to systematize that and, and like give people some direction and, and follow up and you know I've filmed enough different topics that I can uh, give people different games which is you know that that's that's what I was like probably one of the hardest things was like I, I originally had like a, a syllabus which is basically just like you know a set thing that people learn mm-hmm. I had it like up until Two sec- second strap of blue belt yeah. and then I was, kind of, I was and then I was like well after that people start get, you know like Mikhail has a different game mm-hmm. to other black belts to other brown but like everyone kind of has their own unique style and take on so things. the content and the curriculum on there isn't necessarily how to be Lachlan Giles no, it's, it's, no, so it's, so it's not different a set. games yeah, yeah so the idea is you can it's kind of like a to you, some you degree, can self-navigate you can, your, exactly. your yeah. own yeah. game so, from yeah. it yeah so for example last week Lock invited Tom and I to come down and help him out with um like with the gradings so let's say if someone chose like half guard as a topic mm-hmm. um they would show us everything they know from half guard and then we could question them be like what if they did this and it might not be the choice that he says on the video or the choice that he would make but if there was like logical reasoning as to why they would make that decision for the next step it's technically the correct pathway for like that given standard of jiu jitsu right yeah. i would say maybe if they were like a brown belt getting a black belt you would probably be a little bit harsher on that be like all right it has to be like not closer to your style but a better answer than just like a simple answer maybe yeah. But um, for like, let's say a blue belt standard, it's like, well, yeah, cool. That would work as well. It's just maybe not necessarily within like that half guard parameter, but it technically is that next step forwards if it's like a seated guard or if it's a reverse del heva or like regular del heva, yeah. whatnot. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, it yeah. does definitely. So, yeah. So, I mean, the, the idea is over, you know, especially as like people come through this from like white belt, you know, towards black belt. Um, I can sort of see what they've worked on and what I think will fit in. You know, if they've done half guard and they've done um, reverse De La Hiva, there might be another thing that I think will fit well in their game that I can mm-hmm. yeah. suggest um, you know, that that will link. And because you know, you, in the end, you, you kind of, I think a, a lot of people have an issue where they just like, you know, I'm doing spider guard, I'm doing half guard, and these things don't. Like chain there's well. ways to chain them, but it's not very clean. Whereas like you can kind of build out their game. And how far way. along in the jujitsu journey do you think is it realistic before someone can even know what their game is? So I mean, I mean I, you've been yeah. changing as a black belt. From I when, change it, yeah. Like from when change, I met, game can change for sure. Yeah. Like from when I first yeah. met you, like a spider guard. Yeah. A spider guy, crucifix guy. Yeah, yeah, but you get and what I'm you saying. If you're a, if you're different. a new blue belt like me, for example, I don't know what my game is. <laughs> yeah, but that's I mean that's probably like something I would like for once after third stripe on. So we have a set curriculum mm-hmm. at the start. It's like for the first the two, first, first stripes. Three, three stripes. Three. Um, it's like pretty basic. Like you you want to have basic attack. Like I, I go through like half guard and close guard, just like from bottom and a few different passing styles on top just like these are like foundations that you, you sure. want to have so then you can go and learn anything yep. after that um, but then I, I think like probably after the, after you've got those fundamentals you just you just want to you know, you'd, you'd want to if I ask someone say like what's your guard I want them to be able to answer that like you know I like to play half guard or mm-hmm. you know like if they go uh, I don't know I just kind of see what my opponent does and <laughs> yeah, react yeah. to it. It's like, yeah, you're going to struggle mm. to implement your game if, if that's if you're not, like, funneling someone into a particular style. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you've got to tunnel people in um into specific scenarios, so to like, top, bottom, as well as, like, standing. Yeah, yeah, right? like, yeah. Because then, like, they know kind of where they at least don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. But to be kind of, you summarised it nicely in the way that until you kind of know these fundamentals of yep. these positions you don't really need to probably be thinking about 
what your niche sort of game and style is. Yeah, I, I mean, you can. I think there are outliers like, as well. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely outli- like, so, like like someone yeah. like Felix. It's like a definitely yeah, yeah. outlier. He yeah. like uh, he likes to do like the buggy chug stuff from other side control and the reverse Kazakatamis and stuff, and like it absolutely works for him. It's one of those ones he's almost impossible to coach because I don't do any of that stuff and neither do you. So yeah, like like when I see him compete and stuff, I can only give him like really broad strokes in regards to instruction. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he's like he's gone down his own journey, and I really respect that. I think it's really cool. Like similar yeah. to like a Jamie Selby fam, who yeah. like plays a very unique style of half guard yeah. and like. If I would say it's like very very niche, but they're excellent in their own ways. So this dude's obviously doing a lot of homework. From I mean, there's an abundance of content out there these days. Yep. Yeah. For jujitsu specifically, that you could be learning from and doing homework. Like yep. I feel like you're learning as as a you know someone newer to jujitsu. I'm learning so much mentally. Even right now, I'm injured. Yep. I can't I can't train. I can't roll. Yep. But I'm still consuming a lot of jujitsu technique online. That I, that I'm ready to Wait, put into yeah, practice, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. Like yeah. I feel like that that it's the memory. You yeah. sort I of spoke like, about it. I feel like the hardest scenario there is, and I I say this to certain individuals. I'm like, you can't necessarily always trust all the te- like the techniques that are out there. I feel oh, no like doubt. right. Like I, I there, there aren't obviously like jutsu references, but if you know like someone's a good instructor or a good, I guess like competitor, you could probably trust that a little bit more. But mm. that said, though, not all competitors are good instructors good coaches, yeah. or good coaches. And that's actually quite an important topic in regards to instructing versus coaching. I think they're, I think they're two different things. Do you, like, would you say like they're two different things? I feel like instruction requires like uh, that almost like a tactician in regards to like the, the technical element of you should do these steps. Yep. But a coach might have that more individual sort of look at it. So for example, if I was to coach you for a match versus coaching you for a match, I'm saying very different things, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Even though, like, and, like, obviously there's that trust within, like, all right, Locke knows what he's doing, Jack knows what he's doing here, right? And it's, like, I need to guide him because he's, he's, he might be going down that wrong path currently, mm. which is, unfortunately, how you, how you hurt your knee in a match. I told him advice, which got his knee hurt. <laughs> <laughs> what was the advice again? I so I was, like, I was, like, if you're on top, don't. Like don't yeah, he fall said, don't get bottom. swept. Yeah, yeah. Right. So he was in single X, and it was his right leg, and his knees, his knees facing three o'clock, and he like pulled himself up. Yeah, holding onto the back of his head. Yeah, and he pulled himself up. I, I wasn't there. I remember like you sent me the video, and I was like, oh fuck, he listened to me, and he broke his <laughs> fucking knee. <laughs> well, I was up yeah. like. It was like twelve. Did you send him the bill. <laughs> no, <I'm> sure. <laughs> I was up, uh, I was up maybe 12, 12, <laughs> 3 with like 20 seconds to go. So the thought process was just, just yeah. don't get swept. Yeah. yeah. Just don't get swept. I mean, I feel like he would have tried, he would have tried to sweep you and then straight for lucky for that division anyway. I feel like that would have been the only way he was going to beat you. Mm. I, from the video, I couldn't see the angle of the knee. And then once I like zoomed in, I was like, oh fuck, that knee's not facing mm. forwards. Yeah. But yeah, I did a pretty good number. I did a grade, bad grade two LCL, grade two PCL. Grade one MCL, grade one ACL, meniscus tear, and a bit of chip bone. I feel like not all of that would have been from that one scenario, though. I know you felt pretty good before that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this, I mean, we, we can we can lead on to this topic, which is um, c- kind of leads into like, should we be? How much coaching, uh, like in a, in a match, should be like technical ad- advice. Um, I think it depends it, on the time span of you can project the words because <laughs> so, yeah. so much is going on, right? Like, I feel like there are some things I can, like, coach immediately, right? Yeah. But there are some things where, like, this, they need to just ride this, this scramble right now. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a hard one because I, f- I feel like if you're competing, you should know what you're good at and whether it's available to you or not. And I really feel like if you have to be talked through it, you're going to be sl- like, it's, you, you're going to be bad at, you're going to do it poorly, you know, like mm. if you have to like take the instruction, like grab the arm. Well, there's always it, a yeah. lag. There's yeah. always Who a lag. Who has right? that time to really yeah, absorb like that? Either your anyway. opponent's terrible and lets you do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? And they can or, hear the instruction yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, that said though, in, I've done that sorry. a lot in white belt. I've, there's been some white belt matches where I've like, you know, grabbed their arm, pin it. And like, I've kind of like talked through a, mm-hmm. a submission, but I, I feel like as someone gets more experience, coaching that's not on the table. from the sidelines is, is a bit more of a tactical 
you know, like, as in like you kind of take a step back, you're like, you know, mm. more like, you know, keep the, put, put the pressure on them, slow down, you know, more about like uh, controlling the pacing of the yeah, match like and the tempo, like composure. you're winning, you're losing. Sort yeah, of yeah. You know, you need to work. Um, um, that yeah. said though, I've, I, and yeah, this definitely works at like the, the lower belts and like the less experience, but anti-coaching definitely works too. Like I've definitely like had students in like full locked in guillotines and I'm like, you're good. He doesn't have the right grip. It's like not going to choke you. And then they've like, let go. <laughs> and, oh really? Yeah. And like my guy got out and won and I was like, well, you win some, you win some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cheeky. Um, but yeah, anti-coaching definitely worked. You know, also like, I guess at the lower belts, being a higher belt, you can kind of like instill doubt into the opposite end. Like I know whenever we're at Pampax and stuff and we're like coaching, yeah. like even our students that don't do any leg locks when they enter like single leg X or something, like you just see the opponent shit their yeah. pants and you're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like we'll take it for what it is, right? But like that guy might not be like a leg lock specialist at all, but it's just one of those ones where that gym name and like the people that they're coached by have some kind of reputation in that field. So there's that element of anti-coaching. Mm -hmm. And I feel, I feel like, like I'm often just coaching the refs as well. Just yes. trying to make the ref I'm think playing. my guy's doing really well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely... That was I've, awesome. Doing great. Well, I've definitely played the ref as well, right? In regards to like, all right, you should be getting your points now. And then you can see like the cogs turning the ref. They're like, should I have given that points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they'll give like two. And I'm like, that was, that was questionable, but that was, <laughs> not, that was questionable. Um... Yep. But yeah, I mean, I've refereed. Have you refereed? As, like, you've refereed too, Not for right? a long time. I've yeah, refereed no. a long time, but I've definitely been in scenarios refereeing where there'll be, like, a match going on. And I'm watching the match, and maybe, like, you've zoned out for, like, three seconds, <laughs> and you've zoned back in, and the positions change. And then you've got to like, work out. And like, I'm like, so they were here. <laughs> yeah. Now they're here. I'm like, therefore. I'm like, uh. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, so much usually goes on, like, within a match that I definitely... I have to disagree with your coaching saying that like it shouldn't help that much, but I definitely think it helps. I definitely think like coaching helps. And I think that depends on the individual. Mm. Like I feel like, I feel like I've definitely helped you in your corner before and you've definitely helped me in my corner before. I remember that match against Youngnam, that first one where like you had the outside, the like the outside Ashy position. I was like, yeah. it's like, 30 seconds left just oh that's good yeah that's just that sort of stuff like, just yeah, don't yeah, fucking yeah. let go to the leg yeah, so he yeah. like can't like like you're winning he's only going to win if you transition and fuck up yeah, just yeah. don't even yeah. transition right <laughs> like, no, those but, but that's a bit similar sure. to you saying you know you got to push you got to work there's 30 seconds left yeah, that's yeah, helpful yeah. information that's strategic mm. yeah but that's yeah. yeah but that's one of those ones but I guess the element of coaching there is you're not certain if the person you are coaching is fully aware maybe due, like due to fatigue and the stress of the match yeah. so you're just kind of helping them with objective objective uh i guess insight of the yeah. match but i think that is coaching right and then there's obviously the individual within that so like for example i coach kadek and when i and when i coach him i'm like a full nervous wreck beforehand because i'm like i can't fuck up my words because like i'm his eyes if i fuck up left pretty and right unique situation yeah, though if I, yeah if i fuck up yeah. left and right right like he's he's has full trust in what i'm saying mm -hmm. And like, obviously if there's like deep scrambles, I'm like, all right, I want you to keep moving, get your hips higher, like don't concede an underhook. And that's yep. usually generally good yep. advice for most kind of yep. scrambles. Um, but then there's also like, I need you to reach the arm and I'm like, fuck, I didn't say which arm, you know? And then there's things like that. That's what I mean, there'd be another level of information that you actually need to, or detail that you need to include with your instruction with Kaido. Yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and, and like, I try and like prep for that as well. It was actually really nice to travel with him to America when we went, like, uh, there was one ride we went on in, in Disneyland where it's meant for, like, parents and kids to help kids drive, right? So, like, so like, but, like, so you, like, you go down, like, a set track, so you can't deviate too much, but you can go, like, it does that along the track, and, like, you can, like, stop and start, and there's lights and oh, stuff. Oh, so is that the photo you had up with him in the driver's seat? Yes, yes. Right, I remember. Yeah, so, yeah, so we did that. Oh, I thought that and was a full piss take, so he no, actually could drive a little bit. Yeah, so I, like, I, like, coached him through it, and it was, like, I was, like, this is actually really good practice for me coaching you in a match. <laughs> Cause yeah. I like, yeah, it's like, all right, I need to slow down like 30% throttle, 40% throttle, yeah, things like that. So I think, and yes, that is a unique scenario, mm. absolutely unique scenario. But like, um, I think with other students as well, even just like motivating them through a match, I think is quite important too. I think that definitely works at the higher level as well. Oh, for sure. No, yeah, that, that's, that's, yeah. I yeah, I'm all like, um, 
the part where I think, you know, I, th I think, I, I, and this probably goes down, I, I, we might get into this discussion later, but like the way that when you're performing skills, like the way that works and, and whether there's uh, a cognitive conscious process involved in the execution of of yeah. skills and um which i think a lot of people well, a lot of people would argue there's not a huge amount of um or if, if any at all and therefore taking someone into like uh taking them back from like an automated yes movement no, sequence to like uh oh like i've got to grab an arm you know like now now they're when they should almost be in the zone. You've taken, you, yeah, you no, take I, them out I, of the zone. I, I totally um, get what you're saying. I've like I, I mean, when I was in Brazil, there was a, a guy I was living with, and he 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 always yeah, Fabio Gurgel was his coach, yeah. and he was he said to me, I don't want, I never want Fabio to coach me because he coached me once, and he made me go for a move, and I lost the match, like because Fabio saw the move and would have been what Fabio would have done, but it's not what this guy was yeah. good at. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you're saying it's taking taking him out of that sort of flow state into a conscious decision making state yeah essentially mm. yeah yeah and i feel like and i definitely i can like resonate with that i feel like for me i feel like i'm quite a hard person to coach like technically within a match but easily to be motivated in a yeah match. yeah for sure so like yeah. i feel i feel like for me like i would compete my best like i said in pure like last week in pure chaos mm -hmm. right if I, I don't i don't even know what we like i i don't know what decision i'm gonna make in two seconds mm -hmm. but i know i'm gonna make right now Mm -hmm. So I feel like in regards to someone coaching me, if someone was like, I need you to get underneath your opponent with, with this arm or whatever, I'd be like, that's too much information. I can't even listen right now. You know, like, so I definitely get that. Yeah. And I think, but, but I think you also, you also would know whether you can get underneath. Yes. You, know, like you, you yeah. can feel that. Yeah, like for sure. You're like experienced if, enough if, to know. If you're like underhook the opponent and I'm not underhooking them, there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unless yeah. it's just like, if it, maybe if it's like, um, you, you know, if I saw you're tired and you're like not going for things that you should, yeah, that that might be like you know get the underhook and you know like that yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that might be. But um, but when you're when you're fresh and you're you feeling can keep it moving, out, think, yeah, 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 that makes yeah. sense. H how do you think? Um, so in regards to obviously like that coaching, there's obviously like a uh, the whole like the Danaher effect of how he how he coaches his students and he's like yeah. always there like giving technical advice. Do you think that's that's more of like a a psychological sort of like a confidence booster and a I guess a confidence breaker for his guy slash other other person? It's interesting because it's the like what he the way even the way he um, articulates even the way he runs his classes from what I hear is is almost the opposite of what the the way like the skill acquisition people say you should do. Um, what is can your, you describe yeah. those two different um, yeah, so, styles? Uh, so I've been to his classes, so I can like yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but like I, and I, I, I'm actually, I would say I, oh, I mean, I try to mix the both together. But there's like the the big fad. I'll say fad, but it might be the the, the prevailing theory. I should say at the moment in the world of skill acquisition, it, it's called the uh, ecological approach. But it's basically like it's the idea that we don't actually go through like um, information processing when we when we perform movements. So you might think of like, you know, if I'm going to do an arm bar, that like I see an arm and my brain has this map out of like how Breaking an arm bar should how stuff. an arm bar should look and like an ideal arm bar, and then I, it has a procedure of steps that I uh, go through to to get the arm bar. Um, which is like how jiu-jitsu is predominantly taught. So like and rehearsal of repetition? Uh, essentially. Yeah. Um, uh, and mental model. So like you've got a mental model, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, whereas the, the ecological approach, uh, I think a, a good way to start to, to explain it is like if you see like a, a tiger chase down a deer, mm -hmm. it does these very good accurate movements mm -hmm. does it even really know what a deer is mm -hmm. or is it just like or is it just like doing interacting thing. with 
the things in the world that are available at the time? Like, is it is it actually coming in with a mental model of like, there's a deer and it's going to turn left and I'm going to I'm going to intercept when it turns left to to chase it, or is it just like a more interactive, like a responsive? Uh, yeah, yep. Uh, that that's like, and you can bring that down. You know, like you know, an ant can do the same sort of things. Like th- these are, these are things that you. Like an ant, I don't think can really, I don't really know, but probably doesn't have a brain doesn't that can form like mental yeah. models of how the world works. So, so if like, if they can do complex movements well, why are we as humans so different? Like, you know, are we not going to be essentially doing the, the same thing mm-hmm. when we, you know, when I chase an, an armbar? Uh, I guess it's more like, um, it's, it's it's actually really hard to explain, and I'm probably bad at explaining it. So no, I, I apologize it, for no, any of the. No, I kind of get what you're saying. So it's just like the like the difference between like, I guess performing and learning, right? So, I guess yeah. like if you were to perform jujitsu in a competition, you should like I know like John's big on you should train at the gym like how you should compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Whilst like um, I agree with you there in regards to when you're performing in a match, it's different to you learning at the gym because obviously learning at the gym, you're like actively taking information in mm-hmm. trial and erroring it and deciding what you like if it's via percentage or just how it feels to you yep. right whilst in a match very similar to what we were talking about in the previous topic it should be less analytical and it should be more just like this is this is the decision i'm making and i'm doing that yeah and so well i mean i suppose like one of the big things is that they they would claim that good movement solutions emerge from practice that's like within the right context so like if you gave me the goal like get to a position where you like extend their arm Mm -hmm. uh then i can just try to do that i could like this would be like an ecological way of training it like i'm going to try to like extend someone's arm and just by like multiple failures and sometimes are closer than others like i'll start uh moving in a more Effective, manner. but I know what you mean. You can't necessarily articulate why you made that little decision. Yeah, exactly. It's just yeah, you, and, I, and you've I've learned from that pattern yeah, recognition for sure. And, and from just a, what you've seen, without a doubt. Yeah. Like even m- most of the stuff nowadays, like I'll be I'll be rolling, and I'm like, like I'm, I'm I might be like thinking about it later, or or someone asks me a question, and like, what do you do here? And then I'm like, I put myself in the position. And I'm like, you can't oh, explain I, it until yeah, you actually I have go to, through. I have to do it. Like, oh, I do this. <clears> yeah, know? no, I so, understand that. So like most of the adaptations I think we make are actually through that process of just like I know what I, I've got a goal like a task I'm trying to maintain the mount someone's doing a an escape and I just like through feel mm-hmm. have like developed like good ways to to prevent that and then so then the question is like you know that, so that they in the skill acquisition world basically think tr- you should try to design practice where these movement solutions emerge mm-hmm. more than are taught. And I think, yes. I, yeah, and I think uh, there's an element there, like to your point of just trying and failing mm-hmm. and figuring things out and trying again is that you can be playful yep. and have fun. And I feel like when you're having fun, your you memory learn. retention yep. is so much better. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I feel like when you start seeing training as maybe like a bit of a chore, that's when you, start maybe using training as the means of the performance as yep. opposed to like the, cause you just, you're like, I don't want to fucking get tapped today. I don't want to lose today. I just want to win every single round. That's not necessarily what training's for. Like I've, I've mentioned before in previous podcasts that the training is a tool so you can get better at the skill at hand and like performing, hopefully you perform well, but maybe like, maybe nerves get the better of you. And so you're saying Danaher tries to drive a training style that emulates competition all the time. No, uh, well, so I mean, da- no, Danaher, like, well, um, well, I've been in his class and yeah. he teaches, he teaches in trial and error format. Yeah. He definitely teaches in that kind of format, like, like kind of like three moves from here for one class, three moves from another the next class, but you'll kind of look at the room and you'll see which ones are the high percentage moves. Right. And then he'll yeah. be like, all right, this is the good one. This is the bad one. The bad, okay. op- like yeah, the good yeah. option, the bad option. Yeah. But from being there, I believe he was saying like, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did say this to me. Even he was like, you need to, be training like how you'd perform because that's how you would be like that's the thing that you're practicing even though i don't necessarily like i kind of agree with like 
you, I, I'm I, getting confused in that. So you talk about intensity though. I mean, because I guess, you can't, I guess intensity. You can't I guess train inten- at that intensity all the time. Yeah, I, yeah. I, agree. I mean, some yeah. people can. I feel like the youth. I can't. Yeah, it's a that's a yeah. But yeah, I, so like um, oh, that, that's, yeah, that's like representativeness, like how representative is your training of, of the actual match. Generally, they say the closer it is, the more Prepared transfer of the skill mm. will be to to a match scenario. Um, but of course, but then that's going to tie into yeah, fr- it, how frequently can yeah, you do exactly, that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, maybe there's a little bit less, like maybe your actual skill learning, or development might be a little bit less if you go at sixty seventy percent. But you can do it for, you can now train for like three hours compared to like a hundred percent for minutes. like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know half an hour. So yeah. um, I think I, I think I'd say almost categorically that for a beginner or intermediate level, volumes. Oh, I was going to say, do, do you think I, I, for me as a like in, in the lead up to ADCC, I did way less training and Short just went hard, yeah, but more training. frequently. Yeah, so I just wanted all. I know my, my I'm not trying to develop new skills that much now. I've got the comp in. Yeah, you're sharpening, weeks, I you're just want it all to be tools. like as yeah. close to what it's going to be like in a. But yeah, I typically lean toward believing that if the the dumb analogy I give is that if we had a tennis ball with a target on yep. the wall, I could sit here with the tennis ball and I could throw it seventy times at that target, or I could throw it at ten times every day. Yeah, and I believe that if I threw ten every day, be, yeah, I'd sure. be a far better. Yeah, I am. Yeah, and I think like that leads well with what we were speaking about last week in regards to like that balancing act of what like you should do with your like your training regime. So there's like 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 primary things and secondary things. So like for me, I use like lifting weights as a secondary tool of like exercise. I know you don't. And, and even though you're all juiced up, you don't <laughs> you, you don't lift that many weights, do you? I don't really do any now. No. Yeah. Yeah, and just you, people, I guess. I don't yeah. even lift people. I just squeeze. He gets them. a he gets a sore back if he lifts people. <laughs> Um, I probably should do weights well, to stop that. Um, well, uh, I mean, is that just because you don't bo- you can't be bothered? You don't feel like you need it? Um, what's your thought process behind that? I'm kind of interested to get into that. A little uh, bit, if that's cool. Yeah, sure. Um, he just thinks he's strong enough. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, but, um, I mean, you are. I would say uh, for your weight division, you're probably like. I am strong. Uh, yeah, for, you're strong uh, enough. Look, I think it would probably help for like wrestling. I think, I think for jujitsu. But is now jujitsu becoming a little bit more? Uh, wrestling influence? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. No, like, uh, well, for ADCC, like, obviously there's a wrestling component. I think having speed and power and explosiveness and strength is more of a factor in that. On the ground, it definitely helps, but I just, it's like, one, I, it's probably just I'm just making up excuses because I don't enjoy it. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, the but training morale is a big thing. If yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, any, no matter what you're doing, yeah. you're not going to do very well at it if you don't enjoy that thing. Yeah, for uh-huh. sure. Yeah. Now, um, I mean, anytime I've lost, it's never. Been always, there's always been like a out. technical end, like oh, like I needed to block their cross face. You know, like that's a simple solution. You didn't. You've never lost, and you felt like it was because of a strength deficit. Yeah. Basically, yeah, I think that's a fair reason. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. But I also think that you're also like a like quite an outlier in regards to like an athlete. Like I would say, if you could like narrow down like athletic traits, there's mobility, there's strength, there's power, and like I would say that I guess there's like cardio flexibility, right? Maybe like a fifth, and if cardio flexibility, I feel yeah. like you like tick three out of five boxes well, yeah, and then the other two are like really lacking yeah <laughs> right so i feel like if you were to i guess like the law of like diminishing returns i feel like if you would if you had maybe put in effort to get like the power up and that speed up right yeah like maybe be di- but that said though that's just me speaking objectively you never really know because you'd be a very different person and like you'd be rolling yeah. differently you'd be doing different techniques i feel like you're, yeah I, th- I feel like if i were very to, like, strong like and for, mobile like for my guard if i you know if i was playing a wrestle up style of guard or like something that had to close the gap quick. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah. be a lot more of power beneficial. Training. Um, yeah. But my my guide was at least for ADCC a lot more. Like that the att- the key attribute there's like attribute wise is mobility. I was going to say you got yeah. a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Yeah, his ability is, to is put that something his that knees behind his lap. Yeah. <laughs> and and just good. I've got good. I've got very good isometric strength as well. Like I'm not. I'm. If you got me to like lift weights, I'm, you'd probably say I'm not very strong. But mm-hmm. like I can. If I get a good frame, I'm very hard to like. Uh, well, even the separate. squeeze though, and a good squeeze, yeah. yeah. But even that's kind of isometric, uh, well, slightly concentric. 
Well, it's uh, a yeah. it's an interesting one because so like, I remember like the one time we lifted weights together. He was like doing a lat pull down. Mm. You know, typically when people pull a lat pull down and like momentum stops, they like they can't row the rest. Right. That, As it, the muscle gets shorter, they get weaker. Is that what his you're was the opposite? <laughs> it was like it was like he like it was like it was like a struggle to get to here, and once momentum stopped, he just like engaged his entire body and he was able to pull. <laughs> that kind of makes sense from what you just said, though. <laughs> yeah. everything's used to being in tight, you know, yeah, fully yeah. short. I was like, I was like why is he strong range? from yeah. the opposite end of things? <laughs> Probably why I suck at shooting because <laughs> my arms are here. I'm horrible I there. Too. I, I feel like my shoulders are gonna yeah, break every yeah, time. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, like, but I think that's just outlier, right? And I think that's quite important to identify as like an athlete maybe even i think in jiu-jitsu like if you've got something about you that's a bit different then you can now throw people out of you know like we're all calibrated like if you know if i'm if I, let's say i like body lock pass right mm -hmm. my body lock pass is calibrated to the room of people i roll with and then you've got someone who's like ridiculously flexible for the go-go platter yeah and like I'm calibrated to regular people and suddenly someone it like every time I go to the body lock, they're throwing their their leg over the my yeah. head. And, and it's I'm like not in used front of to your that, face. Right. So like if you have a, an attribute that makes you a bit of an outlier, having using that as part of your game, I think, like is good, especially against someone who's who's quite high level because they're used to yeah. like, you know, they, they kind of know everything that's coming, but you can throw something that's kind of out of left. An field. element of surprise yeah. is always yeah. going to be an advantage. I actually feel like that's where we're quite similar, Locke, and that's why like I think I've also like arguably done better in like open weights than like my own division, yep. where it's like people don't assume that we're able to like bear the weight, and yep. then it's like we surprise someone that's heavier and bigger, and then we're in a better position, and then we can yep. now win. Uh, whilst like, and I think that's also just like the concept of. Um, the room that we're in right like you trained jiu-jitsu as a kid and now you're an adult whilst i was always like a small adult right yep. so i'm always rolling people that are bigger than me yep. so i'm used to that yep. i remember like the first time i rolled at someone like i remember the first time i competed at light featherweight against an actual light featherweight i was like this is fucking way harder than the gym <laughs> i'm like this guy moves so quickly yeah, yeah. All right and like I'm, I'm so used to just being the quicker one and i'm like oh it's kind of like an even playing field now this is now different to what mm -hmm. i'm used to yeah and it's nice to see that now, like, jiu-jitsu is in a point in Australia where, like, they're, like, rooster weights and, like, featherweights, like, and, like, featherweights and stuff. They're just, they're everywhere now. Yeah. I remember, when, like, me coming up the ranks, I was, like, one of three, <laughs> if that. Yeah, there weren't a lot of us. Yep. Is your mobility and flexibility something that you've had to work on, or is it just something yeah, that's so, come yeah. with jiu-jitsu over years? Uh, a bit of both, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I've got hypermobility just generally. Like if you look at my fingers, they like you know, they bend back mm -hmm. quite a bit. Um, but then I think just doing jujitsu and and then I kind of made a concerted effort to get more flexible. And, and what ADCC. did that look like? Um, I pr predominantly hamstring stretches and hip rotator stretches. I just looked functionally like what are the movements? Yeah, what do you need? Gonna, am I going to mm -hmm. need to recover guard in you know? Well, he'd be kind of doing like here. the. Like kind of like the piriformis stretch, but then he yep. put his elbow to his to his foot, so then his knee could be like behind his lat. And but I'm just more was interested. Was it like you've obviously you've, you've selected your stretches that make yep. sense, yep. and then is it holding them for a minute? Do you do half an hour worth of stretching? Uh, do you do David Goggins and sit there for fucking two hours? No, <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> no. Nah, nah. um, so I, I, I'm a believer in the. The minimal required dose. So um, <laughs> yeah, everything. Me, me, me too. <laughs> so I looked up the research, and um, so uh, it seems like one minute five times a day is enough to get gains. That I got more flexible. So. One minute five times a day. Sorry, five times a week. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yep, yeah. One minute five yeah, so times. Of, of that individual after, stretch. Yeah, and then you. So do whichever stretches whichever stretches I wanted to do, I'd do a. So just stretching every stretch for a minute. Yep. Five days a week. Of that's that is pretty minimal. Yeah, that's that's very achievable. For yeah, I mean, people. it was like after training, it'd be that's like well, like ten twenty <laughs> minutes max. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. like max. Ra rarely more than ten minutes. Yeah, and and after training is when you like to do it. I like to do it after. I mean, so you never I, do I don't separate? have a, I don't have a. I occasionally would do it separate. I don't have like. A, I I I didn't read any like research on. What would be a better time? I know like. Uh, I will get more range after training because I'm mm -hmm. warm. Yeah, and like I'll. when I'm sore, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm sore and I would go in and try and stretch, I'd be like, 
like before training, I'd often it's not such a nice feeling. Yeah, so I I don't know if I was actually getting as good gains or not if I tried it then. So I I'd try to just make a I mean the hardest thing I think for most people is just that they just don't do it. So like just making it like, okay, end of training, do ten minutes of stretching. Yep. I'm um, so shit at that. Yeah. But I think I think I, 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 never, I think it's mainly because I have a class to teach next though. That's yeah. I, I've probably boohooed stretching for a large part of my life until more recently and I'm just age. seeing the age? V- yeah, seeing the <laughs> value and the necessity for um of it. For like uh Injury prevention or more like um, health or, or like yeah, performance? Yeah, injury performance. prevention, probably more performance. Yep. Um, because, you know, I would regularly regurgitate that, hey, if something's tight, it's because it's weak. Yep. And if we create some neuromuscular right, sure. activation, yep. then, you know, range of motion is typically improved with some stability. But yep. at the same time, I try and learn things from other sports. Like you look at a gymnast, for example. Yep. Someone of the Roman rings, what do they have that's outstanding? Well, they've got really good lats and they've got really good biceps. Yep. So what are the movement patterns that they're following? And then, you know, you look at um, dancers. Yep. Well, they do a lot of stretching and they're pretty fucking flexible. So yep. it, it works. Yeah, yeah for know, sure. Yeah, you, yeah, can, yeah, you can't yeah. deny that yep. it works. I think it's just, it just how do you like prioritize it with everything Yeah, how else? do you fit it in? Well, right. that's where, I mean, I mean, uh, obviously like strength and definitely like, I, I mean, I, 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 strength, Strength training definitely can and probably does help with grappling for sure. Mm-hmm. But stretching, I think, definitely does as well. And I feel like there's a lot of people who spend a lot of time doing strength work and don't do any mobility work. Do you feel though, so I feel like there's, I feel like up to, a, so my answer would be yes, but up to a point. I feel like there's obviously the type of body, and I hope this never happens to you, but where like you're so flexible and you're putting your feet in scenarios that, maybe you could do when you were younger and then then you have like meniscal issues and like your knees start to break and things like that because like uh, obviously it, like it could be depending like, what pain, pain's a pretty good indicator i don't want like, to name, name names but i know people that like are very flexible but their knees are horrible now yep. and like it's because they yep. put their feet in spots that uh, uh, but i mean that's yeah. just selecting the r- the right stretches you know like um like deep deep into knee flexion under load like while well, you've like got some Tension. ability to rotate, like might be fine, but you might, you know, if you've got some so physical issues or something, it can. So you do know, you think that's more like, of a, uh, I guess, like a, a technical experience like a hamstring then. stretch is not gonna cause an injury, you know? right? Like it's gonna I'm, like yeah, I mean, you're gonna. Have, I mean, I've yeah, I can't see any correlation between hamstring flexibility yeah, so, and knee so pain. Yeah. Or knee, yeah. Knee well, I mean, I've torn my hamstring. Yeah, you could do a hamstring. Yeah, I've torn my hamstring in jiu-jitsu twice. Hopefully not from stretching. <laughs> well, mine was from... You maybe you should have done yeah. some more stretching. Yeah. Well, mine probably was more a, a tornado sweep yeah. one, and the oh, other yeah, one yeah. was... Well, it was a, ten, a tornado sweep on Adam Jones, who's like way bigger than me. Yeah. And then the other one was... I remember I just had a... It was before one trials, I remember. And I was just... I was, we were training in like... the Back before the renovations, it was where... Like those 9.30 sessions where it'd be like super sweaty on the mats. And it was like one person stays in against three. And I like shot in on Aaron Hughes and I think I just shot in too explosively yep. and it just my hamstring tore. I remember being like, I took him down and I was like, I need to stop. I'm pretty sure I just tore my hamstring. Yeah. And I didn't even think you could tear your hamstring that way from shooting. Yeah. 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 I just really wanted to take him down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I like, I've never done a soft tissue injury, really. They've always been joint. Yep. Jiu-jitsu is very, yeah. Muscles are pretty rare in jiu-jitsu. Hamstring's probably one that, well, when I fought that guy in England and he tore his bicep from an overhook, that was the weirdest thing ever. The more, the bigger issue with stretching for injuries is more like, like if you, you know, if you are flexible and then you go, okay, I'm going to stretch, or even just if you're flexible, like you often try to utilize that. But like, you know, if you if you now li- like to get stacked all the time, oh, I'm playing you devil's feel, advocate. I'm yeah, just yeah, saying, yeah, no, like uh, that. That's probably more of the issue. Like, you know, you you don't mind being stacked because you're flexible, but then mm. eventually that's like. It's not a good thing long term. For, for sure. Yeah. Like I think I, I mean, I, from the strength training background, yeah. you know, the argument was always, hey, you shouldn't do stretching before you do strength based workouts because it weakens you. Yep. You know what I mean? But if, or you could also say, okay, you've increased the range of motion to somewhere where you don't have the stability because it's not yep. activation. But my thought process on that now, looking back, yep. is, is a bit it, like, yeah. If I'm five percent weaker, does that really fucking matter? Like, yeah, I'm I, think, sti- I can I think still 
achieve what I'm trying to achieve probably in a safer manner yeah. and not risk injuring something else because well, the body the J- compensates. Yeah. yeah, and there's the JT approach as well where he'd just be like, well, why don't you just train that end of strength? I mean, end, end of range, range strength, yeah. right? Well, that's how I've got away with it, right? So, yeah. you know, for example, an RDL is a big stretch yep. on the hamstring. Do I really feel the need to stretch statically if I – like how much – how much stretching can I achieve just with my body weight and reaching to my toes versus having 160 kilos on a bar and stretching? I mean, you could do it in like, I mean, I guess you could add to it by like doing that as a Jefferson curl where you're going lower yeah, yeah, than yeah. the ground, right? Not with but 160 kilos. Definitely not. That's very dangerous. Yeah. But like, and in that regards, I guess with strength and conditioning, it's like, where do you then like draw the line? And that's why it's like, for me, I like, I like the lifting element of things, even if it's end of range lifting and like, I think there's definitely benefits to stretching as well. And and when I do stretch, I usually feel better. It's just one of those ones where I never really think about it unless I'm like really sore and I have to stretch. And you know what I think one well, of the excuses I mean, I, is, is is that I probably just, I, yeah, I have had an excuse. Stretching is fucking hard. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I don't it's, enjoy it's it. It's fucking hard. Like, and it's, it's, it's an effort to yeah. hold that position. Yeah. I'll like, be sweating. I almost want to, like, it's good when you go to, like, maybe they get a Thai massage or something. Hey, you yeah. get an option for a bit of stretching. These days, I'll opt for... Yeah, yeah, give me half an hour of that stretching yeah. where I can lay here and you can just yeah. pretzel me. We yeah. need to go to that place in Richmond, the one that I was telling you about. There's there's a place in Richmond where they do like professional I'm stretching. Suspect already. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it suspect? near Victoria just Street? About a Thai, Thai massage place, oh. and then you're oh, right. no, no, Victoria no, no, Street, no, no. Richmond. No, it's like a, it's like a, uh, it's like professional stretching where like it, where you don't break a sweat. Like one person just have like you ever done the you. um like Liam's done it and he said he felt taller afterwards. I believe him. Mm. I don't know if I believe much that comes out of Liam's mouth, <laughs> but have you ever done the, uh, or seen the, what's it called? It's a type of yoga, I think, where they use like a silk hammock sort of thing. Oh, aerial where, yoga. Where you, uh, I think is that what it's called? Yoga, yeah. Mm. I don't you know ever, you ever done it? No, no. I do have, I, I do have a friend uh, that does do it. He really likes it. Yeah. It looks appealing like for the, for the effortless type of stretching and just mm. using mm. gravity. I think I it's know. called aerial yoga. Yeah. I, I don't mean, know. It, it might be two separate it. things and I could be wrong, but don't quote me on that. That sounds right. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I think doing, I mean, you've, you've gotten away with it. Like you just do jiu-jitsu, huh? Like you don't really do anything else, do you? I mean, in the end, like you, you know, the human, I, I just think the human body's pretty good at adapting to the loads placed upon it. I you know, like, yeah, as I in like, think like so as well. I, I feel like I'm pretty strong by doing jiu-jitsu movements. I could be more strong for sure. I meant, but I, I, but I feel like I'm like, but you know, I've, I've probably covered like seventy to eighty percent of. I meant more so in capacity regards that, to that could be pushed up, you know, like the diminishing returns. Though, so I feel like the diminishing returns on learning in particular. I feel like, uh, when you're at the gym like two, three times a day, even if you're not training in the sessions, but you're just there participating and like you're helping people, you're working out techniques and like troubleshooting. I feel like there's a scenario where that. Where like when you're doing something else, it kind of refreshes that learning element. I oh, like it. just doing a different type of exercise or something. Just doing complete. There's like something completely yeah. different, right? So like for me, like when I like I feel like if I was to lift weights, and then I start learning from you or troubleshooting with you, I feel like I'm more invested in jiu-jitsu as opposed to if I just did jiu-jitsu like six days a week and like doing it okay. twice a day. Yeah. I, like personally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. like do you ever get like I guess not that that boredom of it, but just not like not see it as like as interesting like like i feel like i like to miss jujitsu if that makes sense you know? yeah um i don't know i'm I'm pretty good at just like always just loving just, it yeah just, <laughs> yeah i like, mean there's times when i'm like more i think you, you excited, don't get to your level but I, but I, if you're not if you yeah. don't love it i mean yeah. i definitely love it too but i like i like missing it like if i like i like doing maybe like one day i'll just be like all right i'm not even gonna think about jiu today and then like, so yeah, I just think, I just think like, if I go to a strength and conditioning, then I'll end up not being able to do because <laughs> you're going to be sore the <laughs> yeah. next day, <laughs> right? But yeah, I push through that. Um, I don't mind. I, I don't mind that though, because then it like obviously will force me to to like use more technique. You know, if I'm like have DOMS or if I'm sore or yep. I'm tired or whatever. Like fatigue is definitely a thing now that I'm thirty. So old. So old, dude. I know. I think I met you when I was twenty. Because yeah, you came right. on my 21st, yeah. right? Or, no, my graduation party. I would have been 22 then. I've known you for a while now. I know. How old are you now, did you say? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Nah, 30, 37. The first number is still a three. <laughs> You're all right. 37. Yeah, 37. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, are you only 30? I'm 31 31. October. Mm. Are, you, are you 92 as well? 
No, I'm 32 now. Oh, I honey, know. honey. Old. Done. Getting there. Are you gonna Are you gonna be training soon? Like, do you think like your knee's gonna be? At yeah, a I think so. You met Rafa today, um, and I was talking to him about hopefully getting back to jujitsu in the next couple of weeks and just nice. training with some some people that you trust. I trust and know, yeah. and and more positional stuff where um, where I'm not on top and trying not to get swept and twisted up. Yep. But um, I kind of the silver lining I like at the moment is that it's my my right side. And yep. I'm right side dominant. Yep. And so it's kind of going to give me an opportunity to try and ingrain some coordination on my yep. my weaker side. I'm going to suggest having like your right leg as the bottom leg, not like the top leg. No, of course. Guard, yeah. Yeah. I was. Like what, was me, what was the injury? Um, like as in what structure? He, he tore everything. LCL. Oh, everything. Right. Grade two LCL and PCL, grade one MCL and ACL, medial posterior meniscus tear. And um, a little and bit had, of chip bone. Of and your double surgery, right? Meniscal and ACL? Or no, no, no. Just, just they, they they just did the one surgery. The way okay. they um, trimmed the probably the outer fifteen percent of the meniscus. Okay. Um, and everything else is just is the yeah, the the LCL and PCL were still attached, torn, mm-hmm. but attached. So that it's just it's time, and I, I feel like I'm. Like I'm really good some days, like I'm running up the stairs again mm-hmm. and and then, you know, just doing normal shit and it's not bothering me. But then I'll just be talking to someone in conversation and just swing my legs and I'll be like, oh my God, like fuck, maybe I'm not as close to jiu-jitsu as I, I thought. And I, I still can't achieve full knee flexion. So yeah. until I can really sit on my knees and yeah. sort of lean back, it's, it's just going to be a matter of getting confidence back yeah. into it. I mean, I, happen. I've always thought it's quite, obviously, like, you have this in your body, but I've always thought it's quite important to get back soon to, like, the primary task, mm. just so, like, you can adapt your body to, like, that scene, even before it's fully 100%. I feel like, I feel like that 100% never really comes if you take too much time off. No, no doubt. Right? No doubt. Um, like, how's your rehab been going for it? Have you been doing a lot? Um, I've, I've consistently been sort of testing it throughout the injury and what I can do without trying to cause any aggravation, but then obviously trying to get back to some form of strength training to rehab it as quickly as I can. Um, and I'm still having issues sort of curling because I tore the popliteal right. as well. Yeah. Um, so I was having some issues sort of curling my hamstring, yep. um, but I'm managing to st- stretch it and do sort of hip flexion and extension exercises like deadlifts quite comfortably now uh i'm just the main thing that i get is just a bit of pain underneath the kneecap which i feel like is the pcl Mm -hmm. probably um when i'm sort of in a lunge pattern even if it's the back knee but um nothing nothing too crazy man how long long ago now i had surgery the very end of i did the injury on the 12th of march grappling industries and then had surgery maybe two weeks later so it's it's been a while, three, 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 three and a half months, months yeah. maybe, um, and, and I think that's, I think, I think where I'm at's probably as good as what I could hope for, given how yep. much went on. Yep. And yeah. And in a, in a way, that was kind of the, the surgeon's belief was like, look, I know it looks bad on paper with a long list of shit. Yeah. And Tim said this as well. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of better than fully rupturing my ACL and doing yep. a twelve month rehab. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, like, you seem like you're in good spirits about it. I remember that first week, you weren't so happy, but... And you were in that... He had a, Man, he had like a, he had like a robotic knee brace. Yeah, I, had, like I a, was in a full hinged it was knee like brace a, for a while. It looked like it was keeping his leg up. <laughs> yeah, it, knees hurt. Oh, yeah. Knees hurt. Yeah, I remember when I tore my... It was ACL. more just the fucking inconvenience of just being injured. It's like, I got shit to do. And yeah. it's just... that that That's where it was just frustrating. And it's just, you know... Even just taking a shit was uncomfortable. Mikhail's just going to make us look bad because he just tore his ACL and then two weeks later he's back training. And I feel pretty good. I mean, did I, you, wa- you fully, I want a match. Did you fully, <laughs> I want a match. Did you fully tear it? Because uh, yeah. you I, sometimes I, better I to fully in a tore way. It I think you did, In the yeah. middle though. So not at the two ends. That was what you were saying. Like it, was, it was like in the middle of the ACL and not like either like the top or the bottom part. Because it hurts then when it tears, but then usually then pain's kind of No, but this guy. So, so I like, <laughs> I got heel hooked. And my ACL tour, and I competed like two, three weeks after, and I won. And then I was training in England, and like someone single legged 
my good leg and I took one hop on my bad leg and I was like, that was excruciating. And I remember I called you and I was like, man, I don't think it's my LCL. He was like, because I was certain yeah, it was did my Did you LCL. say ACL? Because no, so, it was ACL, so, yeah. But, no, but the thing is, I, I thought it was LCL because of the sound and I told my, like, up, like I haven't, like, touch wood, I haven't hurt my knees since the ACL, right? But prior to that, it was always MCL and LCL. MCL wasn't so loud, but the LCL, there was like a clunk and then yeah. it'd be loud. And that's how it sounded. And I was like, oh, it's probably the LCL because it, like, it hurt for about a minute and then I just couldn't feel anything. Yeah. And I was like, oh. That's what I mean. When I was like, this isn't ruptures, so bad. That's usually what happens. This isn't so bad. Uh, so I was like, it must be like an LCL because those, those don't hurt too much. <laughs> anyway, I like, <laughs> I competed and, I, and like I said, I was in England and then I called Locke and I was like, I think my LCL is pretty bad. It's pretty painful. Or like, I don't know what this is. And he was like, oh no, I'm pretty sure you've torn your ACL. And what, I was like, what would be the normal like one? <laughs> <laughs> he's not, he's not, he's not. I was like, I, I wish I knew this. <laughs> <laughs> Through a heel hook, what would be the ligament under the most stress inside usually? inside heel hook? Um, usually MCL, but that's it, what can I mean, be, it can be ACL. Here, ACL. If there's like a bit of like twisting and rotation involved. Yeah. Yeah. How did you become beautiful moment. the leg lock master? How? Yeah. He has a PhD in knees. Yeah. He actually is a Dr. Lock did, did that have any influence in your interest with leg locks? I don't even know. Probably not. No. Um, I don't know how much. I mean, I think it's really hard to say how much knowing like anatomy and biomechanics, like how much that actually influenced the way I grapple or do submissions just because I kind of don't know how I would have thought about it. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if you didn't know, but like yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, like you know, people who don't know anatomy and biomechanics can still w- know how to break your arm. Yeah, no, you know, no so doubt. It's like a, but but I definitely yeah. have had thoughts, like anatomical yeah, yeah. thoughts, come <laughs> into my mind in weird positions. Ago, yeah, this might not be a submission traditionally, but it's going to be very uncomfortable and force yeah. a movement. I mean, if yeah. you're bending something in a position, yeah, if you're bending in, something in a way the way it shouldn't bend? meant to bend, and yeah. you know what way yeah. that's not meant to be. No, I probably, I got into leg locks more, just um, qualified for, well, actually, even just like when I decided I remember I was you used to that. hate them. I yeah. remember back in the South Area days, you hated them. Yeah. And probably. I and I used to love them back then. Yeah. I mean, I still do love them, but I was horrible. I was much worse at them, but I was the only one that knew how to do a heel hook. I remember just like ripping them from single X. And um, you're probably doing them in the gi. <laughs> no, 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 no. I remember I got heel hooked. I got heel hooked once in the gi by uh, by Ryan, and I was so dark. I was so fucking. I was like, yo, that was. I I felt like I just got betrayed. Nah, I've never done it in the gi. Nah, um, I think just like when I decided to do ADCC trials, and well, which like, was when was the first time you did that? I oh, so to be honest, the first time was when I was like seventeen. I did trials. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but then not first not time for those you won the trials. Um, 2015? Yeah, actually, no, I focused on them before the one I lost in would have been like 14 years ago. I came second. I was doing leg locks a little bit for then, and then I f- yeah, stopped tw- doing them and I focused on gi again. Mm-hmm. And then, um, no gi was really small, yeah, up to like 2000. And but the biggest thing was just 16. like, you know, we've now got a like everything, like heel hooks were basically like no competition does heel hooks, you know, and then as ADCC trials comes up, mm-hmm. and you're like, well, there's a new move mm. that no one's good at, so like. Let's get good at that. And then when you qualify for ADCC, you're like, at least back then, the guys to beat were all the Brazilians. You know? And I'm like, these are like world champion Brazilians and you, you're coming from Australia. You know you're going to fight like one of the top, top guys. three or four um, in the division first round. So it's like, I'd probably not, you know, at least my mindset then was, was like, I'm probably not going to like sweep and pass their guard. I need to have like, a trick. A trick. So I, I basically just worked. That rest, unique uh, different thing and, that we are talking about yeah, before. Wrestling and leg locks was the the thing that was probably lacking. Mm-hmm. But now everyone, you know, now everyone does it. You know? But I suppose just had like a a jump start on that, you know. Like it became, as ADCC got more popular, everyone was. I feel like I there was also work on our leg locks just and, becoming yeah. so I feel popular. like there was also just like, like random moments of like magic. Like I remember when you, it was like Kimura, Choi Bud, Rani Yahya, and I was like, I've never seen Locke ever do that. I, mean, I was we, doing the Kimura trap a bit. No, but it was Kimura trap, bit. but it was never like Kimura to like the choy bar, which is like kind of like now we yeah. do the choy bar a lot more. But like, um, I remember you doing it in the match and I'm like, he doesn't do this. What is he doing? <laughs> he doesn't do 
And then you won, and I was like, yeah, we're all watching at the gym. I don't even know if you know this. We were all watching at the gym, and it was like yeah. a fucking great moment. No, no, I've, yeah, yeah. I remember someone sent me a video or something of everyone, like, cheering. It was pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Even, like, when Craig uh, beat Leandro, I remember, like, everyone was at my place, and I was sick, and I couldn't speak. I remember just shaking my head. I was like, we're never going to hear the end of this. <laughs> I was like, he fucking just bashed him and then choked him. I was like, would have broken his legs. and then That was just him. relief. That was relief for me because Craig was just like murdering everyone at training. And I was just like going like, this guy is so good. He better be and then he's well. Like, and then, <laughs> you know, like and a, he's like losing like, first yeah, round yeah, yeah, and like gear wells and shit. I was shit. like, if he goes in and just like gets smashed, I'm just going to be like, oh, we am I, are we that bad? You know? Yeah. I remember yeah. uh, like the first time I went to Wells was... I want to say 2015 or 2016. 2015, I have the t-shirt. And uh, I remember, like, l- like you and I had this chat. Like, we're watching, like, the juvenile, like, blue belts roll and then the blue belt division. And we're like, I don't even I don't even know if I'd beat them. And you're like, <laughs> I don't know if I'd beat them either. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, are we fucked? <laughs> you know what's funny, though? I feel like, you, you know, I remember 10 years ago going to Worlds and you look at all the purple belts and you're like, wow, everyone's, like, so good now. And mm-hmm. But then you just, you just don't see them. I don't know. They just like, like occasionally yeah. those like guys have disappeared. A small amount saying. of them, like yeah, just like. Well, I think I think I don't know. I, well, I think life goes on, right? Yeah. Like and like, I think it's one of those ones where you know, like you might they might just have different interests, different priorities, and it's like I guess you could you could even like say it to someone like a someone like Keenan, right, or like a yeah. Dudu Najmi who is like coming up the ranks, like killing everybody, and then at Black Belt they didn't quite breach that like top tier, and then they were like, well next yep all right and it's it's oh, but tough. those guys at least like they, they you know they were oh, they were killing there's it, like man. there's plenty of people that are those the examples you're talking about though like the purple belts and the brown belts that came up the ranks and stuff yeah but not even necessarily the ones that were like winning the world it's just like looking at how many people right. looked like good and you know and then yeah. i mean i remember seeing jensen Gomez hard, and he was like a juvenile blue belt yeah and i was like wow this kid's pretty good and then he fucking beat the at worlds yeah I was like, okay, I was right. He was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, um, but I just think life will get in the way, right? Like just different priorities. Like I was saying, like um, I still, well, yeah. I still train like jujitsu a lot, but I'm not like thriving to train three times a day, trying to like keep up and catch up to like those that are better than me. Yeah. I'm aware that like I have other responsibilities now and it's also not sustainable for the life that I currently lead, right? Like, I can probably, I can teach all day, mm. but could I train all day? Definitely not. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you, actually. Like, what's your sort of priorities now and future with competition or just jiu-jitsu in general? Uh, most, I mean, I'm mostly, I, I, I don't think I'll really compete anymore unless... Um, the right, People are throwing the right money deal came up. Uh, <laughs> oh, like, I mean, I'm still training to get better. And I still feel like I'm improving in certain aspects, you know, like you focus on one thing and the other thing drops mm-hmm. off a bit. But um, so maybe I'll have some, you know, revelation in my game that I'm like, oh, I'm going to bring this, you know, I'll get some fire to, to bring it to the next tournament or something. But um, you got to have no, your, it's just like your revenge it's, matches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just train Walt up. That's the plan. Yeah. Um, Walt's going to beat them? Yeah. And Audrey? Yeah. Walt's yeah. taking on Cade. Cade <laughs> will be 36. What will be eighteen? That's Are they the closer same. in age than you and Kate? Oh yeah, that's Probably. that's yeah, almost yeah, the yeah. same <laughs> situation <laughs> yeah, right. repeating itself. I didn't right? even think about that. That's fucking, yeah. that's bizarre. Yeah. No, um, so when you fought Kate, he was closer to your son's age. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Who was one? <laughs> <laughs> At the time. Yeah. No, um, I don't know. So I mean, it, there's just like obviously there's a lot of um, people trying to prepare for trials and stuff. So kind of. Focusing on my training and their training and hopefully like, you know, we'll see how we go at the trials, but try and get as many people through do to ADCC you, as possible. Do you think that like, um, co- like how much does your coaching change depending on the individual that you are coaching, like leading up to trials? Obviously like, like don't even like include me in this because I've known you for so long. Like, yeah. I know the answer oh, like, so like, like different people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously, like, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, people should. That's a hard. That's one of the hardest things about running a comp team training is like, how do you, you know, everyone's got their own moves. For sure. How do you get them to train that, but also like have a expand. good expand? 
expand. Expand, but also like have a good, you know, like group environment, you know, because like we, we do do a lot of just like, you know, you choose what you want to work on, someone else choose what, you know, your partner, you do your thing, five minutes, mm -hmm. partner does their thing, you know, like, and we'll go live with resistance or whatever, but like, um, like that's, I think that's important, but also like, you know, we're trying to do it more now of just like the first point. First point, uh, yeah. First I think point standing, I think that's really like, important. Like, I think that's probably what we were like not doing we as much as we should have, but oh. just because like, it's like just just putting the your skills into the way they need to be. Uh, yeah, leading executed. up to Gear Worlds, I yeah. remember that was a lot of fun. Like yeah. doing that, just not letting people sit in their comfort zones. Yeah. In training, you know, I think it's very, and I think that's where like I take it, like the diminishing returns and stuff into effect. Like, I'm not gonna throw any names out there, but I think like there are people that up to the pro session and they've been kind of working on the same position for six months but i don't yep. necessarily know if they've really gotten any better at it yep and like i know they're trying to get better at it but i think it's one of those ones where like like sometimes i'll just like oh like i'll razz them up and be like oh i've been working with me for six months it's it's getting worse <laughs> <laughs> and i'll be like maybe just working on something else because yeah, a yeah. lot of the time like and this i don't know if this happens for you but yeah. let's say if i'm like i want to guillotine everyone today yeah. That day I won't guillotine a single person, but I'll like leg lock everyone. And then the next day I'll be like, fuck, I'm so shit at guillotines. And then they'll just appear everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll get them everywhere. And I'm like, why didn't this happen yesterday when I was actually trying to get better at it actively? It's a hard one because like, like, you know, if I want to work, like usually, usually the way I train is like, I've got a skill I'm trying, you know, like I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, you know, false reap today. And I'm just, when I roll, I'm just like, I'm just trying to false reap everyone. Yeah. But you know, it's like, I'm on top. How can I get them to sweep me so I fall through? You know, so it's like you're deliberately putting yourself into the position. Yeah, where like that, that's how that. I like try to get better at the skill. But then, you know, you do too much of that and not enough. Like obviously, if I am on top, there's the game of if this was ADCC and you let them sweep you, you lose. Mm. You know, or may may lose. So like, you also need that side of it. So there's like skill development and then comp prep, and you need to. Yeah, you I almost don't want to develop, you, develop you just, a bad habit. I mean, if, if everything's just first point, I don't think people get that much better, like skill wise. Like they get better, but like they get better at the game and the strategy, the, the but not necessarily the technique. Yeah, they, they don't refine yeah. their, their technique as much. So I feel like I feel like when you and I roll, I'll like instantly pick up what you're trying to work on, and then I'll just put myself there just to try and be like, "Fuck your move." <laughs> 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 He's got so much footage of him just fucking bashing me from one specific scenario. Because if let's say like we'll use the example of false reeve, I'm like, okay, he wants to false reeve, and he'll he'll catch me, and I'll be like, we'll go again. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like doing that. You know, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's cooperative training. Yeah, right. It's cool. And like, yeah. and like, I feel like that's where like we resonate well as friends as well. Like, I'm like, nah, fuck your position, dude. Like, you're, I think you're taking stupid. <laughs> 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 like this shouldn't work. Like. We'll, Stone Cold Stunner. That's the. <laughs> I tried it and it was working. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some new techniques. Yeah. Maybe it'll be it'll be dropped in Submeta soon or a yeah, DVD or something. Be, yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's inspired by Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's good inspiration. Stone Cold was was the goat of <laughs> yeah, the yeah, WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was WWE. Great. Yeah. Smashing the beers. Well, on that note, guys, we'll uh, finish with a shout out to Submeta. Sure. I'll, yeah, uh, yeah. I look forward to check it out myself, but I uh, hope everyone enjoyed the episode. Thanks for coming in, Locke, and maybe we'll do it again sometime. Yeah, thanks, guys. It was great. No worries. Cheers, boys. Peace.